Hi, this is Paul Slatkis. Actually, Reverend Paul Slatkis. I'm here with our good friend, Iman Faisal. Ardo, Ralph? Abdul Ralph, yes. And uh, it's a big honor uh, for us to be here speaking with you. Actually, because he's one of my teachers. And uh, uh, in that, uh, my reverendship comes from the new seminary of where, uh, of which uh, Iman has been, I don't know, how long were you associated with the new seminary? Ooh, before 9 11. Yes. Uh, for uh, probably 15 years. Okay. And uh, you gave us a lot of knowledge about the, uh, the Muslim uh, community, about uh, Islam, and uh, it was uh, awakening for our class, and I, I want to thank you for that. Thank you very much. My pleasure indeed to be with you, Reverend Paul. And so that's actually a recent uh, uh, experience. Uh, but I also know you because since you brought up the 9-11, uh, the I want it to be uh, on record here that uh, I think it was maybe three weeks after the 9-11 occurred in, uh, in New York. And uh, Iman and, and his lovely wife, uh, Daisy Khan, um, had pulled together a, uh, a gathering uh, for Muslims and non-Muslims here at the Stennett House, which is part of St. John the Divine, to uh, discuss the concern about this 9-11 uh, uh, um, with the full knowledge of that it's, this is not a Muslim concern, this is everyone's concern. Indeed, indeed, and, and that uh, we condemn terrorism, and that terrorism has no place in our religion, and although it exists, as it exists in almost all religions, including atheism, uh, it, is, it has no place in, uh, in, in any faith tradition which believes in the golden rule, uh, in, in, in doing for your fellow human being what you, how you want to be treated. Uh, so we, we certainly have committed ourselves to, uh, to, to, to that kind of discourse and to seeing how we can build a growing coalition of like-minded people uh, of all faith traditions that can uh, enhance mutual understanding, respect, and peace. And we audio taped that, and we have it somewhere in our library. I was trying to find it, but I couldn't find it because it's, uh, I think it's just 10 years plus years old at that moment. But one of the interesting aspects of it was that I remember Dennis Walcott, uh, who was our now uh, chancellor of school education, uh, did attend that. I interviewed him there. And he had that same kind of belief that you do about that we're all in this together. This is not a racial. This is not a religious. This is nothing but uh, peace. Indeed. And, and to, to quote... Uh, you know, Ben Franklin, we, we have to hang together, otherwise we will hang separately. And, uh, and that's, I think, uh, to a certain extent, what's been happening to some of us. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we uh, have started, and we have done uh, many shows, and we've interviewed you in the past as well. Um, uh, good news uh, uh, for the, the Muslim community, um, because there's a ton of good news. And we want to share that with our audience. Uh, and so... I'm going to include, by far, uh, you, give us a little bit about your background, because I believe you and your family, uh, your dad, and uh, have have been imams and, um, and 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 have taken on, let's call it, the religious spiritual side of of the religion, and uh, and and are the voices of the community. Well, my, I I was born of Egyptian parents, born in Kuwait, raised in England for five years, in Malaysia for ten years and have been here in the United States now for 46 years. You uh, couldn't be this old. What are you talking about? Well, I, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not exactly America's uh, oldest teenager, <laughs> but um, we certainly try to maintain our youthful vigor as much as we can. But you keep me young, Paul. What can I tell you? <laughs> you keep you young. Thank you. You are uh, 97th Street on the east side. There's a, uh, a mosque. Yes. Yes, my, my father was the director of the Islamic Center which at that time was on one riverside drive and still is, uh, and uh, it, he was the one who pieced together the land on 96th Street, 97th Street, that is now the Islamic Center of New York, and I happen to be a member of their board uh, for the last uh, 15, 20 years right now. I remember uh, when your dad passed, and there was such an uh, outpouring of love in, the, in that room uh, for your dad and for the respect that the uh, congregants and those there, those just friends and of the family uh, 
had. Uh, Indeed. What, what do you think it was about your dad that uh, so many people respected? Well, um, a, a, he was steeped in the tradition. Uh, B, he was uh, a lifelong uh, person who committed himself to interfaith friendships and dialogue and interfaith coalition building around the issues of importance. Third, he was a man of peace. Uh, he believed sincerely that our faith traditions were all about peace and about generating the kind of peace which comes about from the direct experience of the divine and of God. Um, and um, uh, he, he, he committed himself to that, to that spirituality that lies at the, that, li that is the confluence of all of our religious experiences. And, and to, to see how we can work together to, uh, to enhance it and amplify that. Well, you're definitely a, a product of, uh, of that a, as well. In fact, uh, I, I recollect, and correct me, uh, as, as you spoke about the Quran um, and about how loving and caring and, and peaceful it is, uh, um, and all intent is, is that uh, brotherly, sisterly love. Absolutely. I mean, the, the very faith of faith, Islam, the word Islam means peace. It means surrender to God. Because the, the, the notion of surrender or submission to God through an experience of God is very peace-inducing. The human being is, is unsettled. The human soul is uh, in a state of, uh, of um, uh, brittleness and a state of discomfort until it anchors itself uh, knowingly, experientially, and deliberatively in God. When you, are, when you are anchored that way, then you feel completely at peace. You are at peace regarding the purpose of your existence. You are at peace regarding your ultimate uh, destiny. You feel that whatever happens to you, even if you die, you are just returning to your, the source of your all-being, who is forgiving, who is loving, who is um, compassionate. And uh, we all long for that, for that embrace. And embrace is, uh, is your soul, and I know for, for so long. But I, just so <coughs> we make sure we, we, we cover it, uh, you, you had a desire to do something down near the 9-11, I'll, I'll bring that up, um, area, to create a community center, if I, if I understood it correctly. Yes, I, I have been an imam of uh, Masjid al-Farah, which is in the 10 blocks from, from uh, the World Trade Center. I've been imam there for 28 years, from 1983, and uh, we needed larger space, uh, and that was the space that we found. I had always had a dream for the last 20 years to establish a, a center which will perform the role of the YWCA and the 92nd Street Y in terms of building relationships between different faith communities, um, as well as evolving what I call an American Islamic community and identity, just like what happened when Jews came here from from East Europe, they developed an American Jewish culture, an American Jewish identity, American Jewish theology, theologies even, because you have more than one American, you know, uh, Jewish uh, theological doctrine. Uh, and the same thing with the other faith religions and the Catholics as well. So it's important for us to, to, to recognize that we are in the process at the moment of evolving an American Muslim identity, culturally, theologically, etc. Uh, so such a space w would be also a space where, where Muslims and people of all religions mm -hmm. can c get together and, uh, and develop this peace and, and mutual understanding, trust, which is very important. Uh, in fact, in my book, which uh, you're going to be talking about in a minute, um, Moving the Mountain, it, we, we, w a mountain of mistrust exists and suspicion. And the way you get rid of it is by getting to know one another by breaking bread together, by learning about each other, by playing with each other, having recreation, which is what that kind of community center will do. Uh, so that has been my dream all along, and we, we felt we, uh, uh, we had made important advancements towards uh, this idea. Uh, and it, uh, you know, it was uh, uh, a victim of the midterm election season. <laughs> Politics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, I, I would say you definitely needed it because I know, me being a kind of a large fellow, when I went and prayed at your mosque, which I did many years ago, um, uh, it, was, it was a small room. You didn't have much room over there. You, uh, uh, and I, I think uh, you have, a, some people say, maybe a billion uh, people of the Muslim uh, 
uh, uh, pursuit and love and caring, they can't fit in that little room. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> they wouldn't have a billion Muslims in America. That's all over the world. However, having said that, when we first started, believe it or not, Paul, in uh, 1983, we didn't have 10 people. We basically had even... Yes, you couldn't have a minion. We, we, ba we barely had a minion. <laughs> we barely had a minion in 1983, but as the, you know, within four, five, six years, the, the crowds began to, 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 uh, to, Im to, to increase. The community Im uh, increased. The area got gentrified. Uh, we have more and more people who work in the lower Manhattan area in the financial district. So we became, uh, you know, uh, by the, uh, by the mid-90s uh, and early 2000s, we were having three Friday sermons consecutively yeah. to each other because we just didn't have enough capacity. But uh, uh, this is, this is uh, one of the reasons which led to, to our search for, uh, for another space. Okay, and let's, uh, let's hope that that comes about, amen. and uh, and a women, and uh, um, especially, especially, and I'll just, this, I'll, I'll say this is a per personal note, especially after uh, turmoil. When there's turmoil and people might say, you know, is this group or that, uh, in essence, whoever's a, a terrorist or whoever's a, a bad guy, bad girl, uh, they are, they are, they are themselves. <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, look, I have a whole chapter in my book which I talk about extremism and, and how we can c combat extremism in, a, in very concrete ways. Uh, and it's important for us to do that. It's important for us to admit and to recognize that we have extremists in our midst. And, and we are among the first who wished and desire and are happy to cooperate with our law enforcement agencies to make sure that any extremist element in our community is absolutely eliminated. It's in our own interest to do that because we are the, you know, we are really the primary victim of our own extremism. Uh, I mean, not only conceptually or ideologically, but even, even in terms of population. The, the, if you look at extremism in the Muslim world today, its primary victims are Muslim in Iraq and Afghanistan, in Pakistan, all these incidents of suicide bombing uh, are killing Muslims by the, you know, every year more than 10,000 people are victim of innocent people are victim of, of such terrorism. So we are the primary victims of this, and we, we, it is in our best interest to eliminate it. So I speak about that, but it's important for us to work together because we can't lick it alone. And, and in the context of America, we have to cooperate. And, and this is what you've seen, even the latest issue of this um, underwear bomber was cooperation with the Saudis, with, the, uh, uh, with our you know, law enforcement agencies. So there is cooperation between, between countries and between f faith communities in terms of combating extremism, which we encourage. So what mountain uh, do you want to move here? Uh, moving the mountain. What is the mountain? The mountain of mistrust, the mountain of suspicion, because right now the, the perception in much of, the, uh, of America is that, uh, uh, is that you know, Islam is the enemy. Uh, there's a perception today, 16%, I saw a poll just uh, yesterday, that 16% of the American population still believes that Obama is a Muslim. Uh, people, th there are per false perceptions which people have which we need to combat uh, because it's these perceptions which result in in actions, as we, we, we say in America, perception is reality, because per people act upon what they believe to be real, which is which is really their perception. When the perceptions are false, we need to we need to improve that, which is why it's important to 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 speak to people like yourselves, because you, the media, shapes people's perception. Education is tr certainly a part of it, but media is perhaps a very powerful way of educating people. If, uh, yeah, I agree, and that's why we're doing it, and uh, the, the Art of Positive Thinking by Reverend Norman Vincent Peale, uh, my mom, who's the, the librarian at Temple Emmanuel, gave me uh, that book many years ago. Positive thinking is, uh, is the key, uh, and the media, I agree with you, I, but, you know, there is that, always that uh, little cachet. I don't think I would have understood that, you know, the written word or the movie is the opinion of the management of the person that wrote it. And that, you know, it's very hard for everyday people to understand that, that newspaper is really, you know, it's a lot of people's opinion. You need to follow, in my mind, I always think you've got to follow your own heart of what you think that life is, is about. That is absolutely true, but emotions are shaped by, by things. Yes, e it's scary. Even when you know, for example, that, you know, the actors in a film haven't really died. Right. You know, okay. they're playing dead or, they're play or the violence is not re even real. Even though you know that intellectually, 
the emotional impact of certain scenes stays with you, stays with people, and it shapes people's uh, perceptions. I mean, I mean, I saw the Ten Commandments when I was a child, and ever since then, when I think of Moses, I think of uh, of, of, uh, of Charlton Charlton Heston uh, as you know, and, and as 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 being what Moses looked like. So, w w as much as we know intellectually in mm -hmm. our heads, that's not the case. These imprints are there, very powerful. and and they're very powerful. No doubt about it. There's people that won't take a shower because of Psycho, the movie. Uh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock. So I agree with you. And so, once again, it's an example of uh, the media's. I will agree. It's a responsibility to keep pushing the positive content, and uh, uh, we're not looking for a monopoly. We're looking for everybody to to push that. Give us a, an example of some good things in the book that uh, that you'll be sharing. In there. Well, I, I I talk about my story. I share my story and. Um, uh, what I stand for and what I believe, which I think is what people very often are confused about or have misperceptions about. So I want to make my position very, very clear. My, my position very clear on extremism my, my, and that we condemn it. My position and my commitment to advancing uh, gender equality in the role of women within our faith tr tradition. I have a whole, chap whole chapter on, on the modern Muslim woman. Uh, I also have a, an important chapter on fighting extremism which I mentioned earlier, and how we have to work together uh, both uh, in, in all levels with our law enforcement agencies, with other faith communities, to, to, to combat extremism ideologically uh, as well as you know, through all the various means that are available at, at our disposal. I also speak about the, the, the importance of evolving and rapidly evolving a robust American Muslim culture and community. It's happening as we are speaking right now. We hear about it in the in the Muslim proms that was written about in Time magazine in Detroit or, um, or high school basketball teams doing their practice in the month of Ramadan from after 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. or even till 4 a.m. because you know, that's, they're not fasting then and they can drink water. Uh, these are aspects in which our, our, our faith is, is being Americanized. And it's important for us to do this. It's part of our historical tradition it's part of not only the Islamic historical tradition, of every historical tradition. Uh, when religion goes from culture to culture, it ex expresses itself in that, in that cultural context. So when Christianity went from Palestine to Egypt to Greece to Rome to, to Holland to England, it became the Coptic Church, the Greek Orthodox Church, the Roman Catholic Church. I mean, these names of countries are not accidental. The Dutch Reformed Church, the Anglican Church, which means the English Church. And similarly, the same, the same thing happened to our own tradition when it went from Arabia to the ancient civilizations of Egypt, of Byzantium, of Persia, of India. It expressed itself in those cultures theologically, in the laws, in the um, cuisine, in the, in, the, in the sartorial, the way we dress, uh, in a way that matched both the ethical principles of the religion as well as the cultural expressions. So we need to develop an Islam in America that, is, that abides by American law, that, 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 that embraces American culture, but is the, is the, is the perfect blend uh, between American culture and Islamic ethical principles. Here's another good book. <laughs> this is a winner. This is what I saw I interviewed you on uh, initially, your book, uh, What's Right with, uh, with Islam. And this came out when? This came out in 2004. Okay. And uh, Queen Noor of, of Jordan said, Imam Faisal speaks from the heart about the higher ground. That's, that's the important thing here, on which we can all unite is the book uh, Brimming with Hope. What was that 16% uh, number that you mentioned initially when we were talking today? Oh, that was uh, a poll that said that 16% of the American population believes that Obama is a Muslim. Uh huh. Okay. You know, you know all the. But going back to what you just said about my book, I mean, the, this common ground is very important for us to realize. People think that that Islam is, you know, an alien religion. I mean, look, uh, uh, there's so much in common between Islamic values and American values. So much more in common between Islamic uh, principles uh, of faith, of religion, of belief, of practice, and Judaism. So much similar between Islam and Christianity. I mean, what is common to us, our common ground, is so much more than what is different. And what we need to do is to recognize this common ground and let that be the platform from which we can coalesce together and build a sense of community, a community of people who love peace, who are, you might say, who are soldiers who are willing to wage peace.
I'm with you, and we're with you big time on this one. Um, and uh, the, the reality is, is that all the religions, the people that understand the religion that, uh, that they live, know that it really is all about peace, and it's all it about is. brotherhood and sisterhood. There is no religion, I think, in, out of what, however many there are, and however many sects of every religion is, none of them are saying beat this other person up. Absolutely. I, I, can't, I don't see where it says that. That's true. I'm, I, I'm with you on that. What has happened, unfortunately, is that people begin to have what I call social identities, uh, just like you might have under anything, with under religious difference, under skin color difference, under, you know, uh, Harvard versus Yale. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, but you can, you can, create, uh, you can create conflict on, en on the basis of any uh, social trait or characteristic or group characteristic be it tribal, be it skin coloring, be it religious, like what happened between Catholics and Protestants in Ireland. Um, and, and, and when a particular group feels that it does not have uh, parity with the other group in terms of power and economic uh, opportunity, that's when you find these differences and that results to, to, to conflict. So the, 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 the solution to conflict is to recognize its sources, address those sources, and where religion is part of the problem, it has to be part of the solution. Yeah. So, um, and again, to you, I think all of these things happen a lot of times when people have nothing else to do. They're spending some time uh, wasting their time or spending time saying that this is no good, that's no good, and this person's no good. Well, it happens, I, it happens when people don't feel they have a stake in their society or their community. They are marginalized. That's why it's important for everyone to, 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 to feel they have stakeholders in the society. This is why we're seeing what we're seeing in the Arab Spring. Uh, the, the, the problem in many of those countries, people who are educated couldn't find a job. Couldn't. This is why the guy immolated himself, the Tunisian person who triggered this whole uh, so-called Arab Spring. Uh, and this is why people are rooting for democracy, because they want, they want a government that, is, that caters to its constituents, that, 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 that makes sure that the concerns of its constituents are met. This is why democracy is very important, and democracy is a very powerful uh, uh, a form of government which everybody in the world wants. Okay, last question. What's good news for you? And best of luck with, uh, with all your books and uh, with your mission, uh, Moving the Mountain. Um, and that book, uh, what's good news for you? Uh, the good news for me is that most people, most Americans want to have a good relationship with Islam. Most Muslims want to have a good relationship with America. Uh, most people of all faith traditions are peace-loving, moderate people wanting to have uh, best relationships with each other. And it's, it's the good news is that if we can figure out a way to coalesce that into a, into a growing uh, uh, coalition and movement of all of these moderates, we can marginalize the voice of the extremists. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with me. Always, always, a, always an honor, actually. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.